what are the big ticket items that really do boost the value of the property? Great question. Yeah. Kitchen number one. I mean, everybody walks in, you look to the kitchen and the overall curb appeal. When, when you drive up there, if your wife says this house is ugly from the street, then that's what everybody <laughs> else is thinking. Yeah. Definitely <laughs> kitchen, bathrooms, curb appeal, I curb would say, are the top three. I never knew about curb appeal, but oh, that makes curb sense. Appeal. <laughs> yeah, that you makes know, sense. exactly. Curb appeal. That makes sense. It's, okay. It says everything. What's going on, world? My name is Carlton Puckett, and this is another episode of Homeschool, where we talk about everything about first-time home buyers. And to my right is my beautiful co-host. I am Rosie Alcaraz, and today we have Graham Ferguson, and he will be discussing everything that you need to know about the appraisal process. Thank you for coming in today, Graham. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been in the business? Thank you. Uh, 20 years now. So fresh out of college, didn't know what I want to do, end up in appraisals. And I've seen the full ups and downs of the market. That's for sure. Yes. Ups and downs of the market is definitely (laughs) one way to describe it. So you're the (laughs) perfect person to ask questions. What is an appraisal? We're, We're trying to find out the fair market value of the house. So So many times I see people getting refi and I ask them, well, what do you think your house is worth? I don't know. Zillow tells me this, you know, or Redfin says that. And so what I'm trying to do is get beyond Zillow and Redfin and actually go out there, see what the real comparables are and just give them the fair market of the house. So everybody is on the same page, the banks, the buyers, everybody feels good about the value. What does a homeowner have to prepare? How do they prepare for an appraisal? People ask me that all the time. Do I need to clean? Do I need this? There's nothing really you need to do for the appraisal. You, You call, it gets set up. What I'm looking for mainly is square feet, obviously, make sure it checks out with what county records say, upgrades, views, stuff like that. But, you know, I get the, I have teenagers, you know, my house is a mess. Don't worry about that. And we want to see how nice the house is, what you've done to it, how big is it, and, you know, how it falls in line with the neighborhood. Now, let me ask a question. Sometimes I will say, being in a business, we've seen appraisals come across our desk, and the house is not exactly the cleanest. So we always wonder, like, how hard is it for you to really get a good look at the house if they don't straighten the house up some? You know, I tell people, I said, however dirty your house is, I've seen worse. So <laughs> so don't, don't worry about this. I do this every day. I'm not looking for that. So, so what is the main thing that, a, a, let's say, a homeowner needs to at least clear out? Is there something that they must do? No, I mean, again, I'm, I'm really just looking for upgrades and stuff. So if you have a remodel kitchen, it'd be nice if you moved all the dishes and stuff off, off the countertop so I can see that. But okay. I'm really just looking for square feet, upgrades, views, things like that. Do you all ever take into consideration, like say a person did do um, upgrades to their property, mm-hmm. uh, if they have receipts of showing what they did, should they have that stuff readily available to present to you to show what's been done to the property? Yeah, it helps. I mean, I can tell by walking in and I'll ask them, hey, this looks like you have granite countertops. And when, when was the kitchen remodeled or when was the bathroom? remodeled and they'll give me a number especially on you know if it's a flip or if they just remodeled it like I'll ask them give me a general ballpark of how much you just put into this because I can see it's remodeled but you know every remodeling is different so can you give me a general idea of what you spent on this and what you spent on that just so I can have a list prepared most people do yeah I mean you don't have to I can tell just by looking but you know of course there's going to be things that they know about the house that I don't know so a list is always helpful so this brings me to a two-part question this time first off why do people even need an appraisal? Right. You know, they, you need an appraisal so you know you're getting fair market value. You could be moving to a different state or, or even if you're if you're local. Oh, this is my dream house. It's listed for 800000 Let, Let's get it. You know, and not knowing that, well, every single other house that's a model match just sold for six fifty. dollars So that's, that's why you need an appraisal. Just make sure you're getting a fair value and the bank needs an appraisal to make sure they're not getting ripped off either. You know, that everybody, it's in check with what it should be selling for. And what do you mean by fair market value? Fair market meaning, you know, if the house is listed for a million and you're buying it for 500000 something's going on here. You know, or or vice versa. If if you're getting it for a million, it really should be 1.5. The bank's going to be asking questions. So. And what do you look at to come up with the fair mar- market value? You already said square footage. Mm-hmm. You already said views. But what other things do you take into consideration yeah. to get a fair market value? Yeah, I mean, the basic premise would be houses that are in similar condition, mm-hmm. similar square fees, similar upgrades that have sold within the last six months. I mean, that's on a very basic level. That's would be what you'll be looking for. And how far do you look? And is it 
two mile radius, five mile radius. You know, it's supposed to be a mile, but okay. with less and less sales these days, uh, we have to expand. I mean, it's not, that's just a general guideline too. If, if there's a better house that's 1.2 miles away, then, then you're going to use it. You know, I just look for, as a, I always try to do it from a buyer's perspective. What would I, as a buyer, look as comparable to this house? Now, the other part of that question I was thinking about, but something just kind of hit me. With me and Rosie both, you know, knowing something about the business, let's say an average Joe, mm -hmm. and let's say they, they, they go into their savings account and they go and fix up their home. They, they put on a new roof or they put an add on to the property or mm -hmm. something along those lines. And they need to figure out how much the house is actually worth. What are some red flags that they want to stay away from? Like if they if they're just looking in the yellow pages or they're just, you know, looking on the Internet for an appraiser. What things do they need to stay away from when they're going to hire an appraiser to figure out how much their home is worth? Well, you know, the first thing people call me, hey, I need an appraisal for for whatever reason. I, the first thing I always ask them is, are you sure you're allowed to pick your own appraiser? Because right now, you know, if you're getting a loan on a property, you'd have to go through the lender's appraisal or an AMC. But but back to your question, if let's say you add on a pool, like people say, how much is this worth? You know, of course, every house is different, every market's different. So the pool example, I would say, you, you don't add on a pool or a spa for resale value. You do it because you're gonna live there for 20 years and you're gonna do it because you'll never get that back. Right. Um, in addition, you probably will get back and then some. And if you do have an addition, just keep the final sign off because a lot of times these county records, they can be years behind. And it, right. I say, well, title shows this and you know, you're telling me it's this. so. Any records in that case would be very helpful. Something I've always been curious about, what are the, the big ticket items that really do boost the value of the property? Great yeah. question. Yeah. Kitchen, number one. I mean, everybody walks in, you look to the kitchen. Kitchen, master bathroom, and the overall curb appeal. When, when you drive up there, if your wife says this house was ugly from the street, then that's what everybody <laughs> else is thinking. Of. So definitely kitchen, bathroom, curb appeal, I curb would say, are the top three. I never knew about curb appeal, but oh, that makes curb sense. curb appeal. <laughs> yeah, that you know, sense. exactly. Curb appeal. That makes sense. It's, okay. It says everything. Yeah. It marks it. Now, as the customer is in the house with you or, mm -hmm. or when you're going through the house and doing an appraisal, mm -hmm. is there certain things they can ask you? Is there certain things they should not talk to you about? Well, you know, they always try to tell me about the upgrades during the process. And I said, let, let me get all my measurements. Let me do, I get to talking and then, then, you know, I forget my photos or something. So I always say, let me, let me do this. Then we'll go through everything you've done. I'll write it down. If you have lists for me, great. But no, I mean, I just, I, I like to be on the same page as everyone. If I'm just doing my job and I'm not asking questions and they're not asking questions, we might miss something. So I always say, do you have HOAs? You know, any, anything to talk about the house, um, I always do it after the fact. Something that's always stood out to me, and I'm sure Rosie can attest to this. This year, this market has been absolutely crazy as far as mm -hmm. figuring out what a house is actually worth. We've been watching people pay more for properties than what the property is worth. How does a customer know if a house has been overappraised or been underappraised? How do we have any idea in that reference? Well, I mean, that's, I guess, why we get an appraisal. I, I can tell right away you know before i even go out there I'll, I'll have a general idea and as soon as i get to the house you might be selling for the same price as them but theirs was way nicer i mean you can just tell as far as the the market these days the value seem to keep going up and up and up right so if you're not paying top dollar or if you're not paying over odds are you're not going to get that house unfortunately so it's kind of every sale right now is is the new comp in the area i like to say wow so you mentioned that every comp is a new sale so i see a lot when realtors bring mm -hmm. their own comps do you appreciate that when they have a buyer and they are representing the buyer and they bring their own comps is that something that yeah you know I, I don't mind if realtors bring their own comps. A lot of times the title company will take two weeks to update their records. So something could have just sold a week ago. I didn't see it because, okay. you know, this realtor's probably been working this house a long time. So I do appreciate the realtors bringing that. So as of a, course, most of the time they're like, yeah, I, I got your house three miles away that sold for the value, that value. <laughs> what about the one next door that just sold, you know, two months ago? What about an anxious buyer when they want to be present at the appraisal time? Do you recommend that? Yeah, I, I don't mind. I mean, I, I want everybody to be happy with the whole process and, you know, they're most of the time respectful. Let me do my job. And then we talk after, but I want everybody to be on the same page. If I see something, you know, if I know going in, let's say you're buying it for 1.1 and I know your two neighbors with the same house just sold for 900. I will talk to the realtor about it. Like, Hey, I know this is a sales price, but this is exactly what I'm looking at. Like, are you, I know the market's appreciating, but do you see something that I'm not seeing here or, you know. And what about the misconceptions about what an appraiser can do and cannot do? 
I would say a, a big misconception is that, you know, they're always going to go low or, or you're, I'm on the bank side. I'm not on the <laughs> bank side. I'm, I'm on everybody's side. I want, I want everybody to be happy at the end of this. So, so are you independent? I'm independent. Yeah. So okay, work, what does that mean when I'm not on the bank side? What does that mean? It means any Wells Fargo bank, they're not calling me directly. Hey, we need this. We need you to be conservative on this. Well, nobody's calling me, <laughs> you know, I'm, independent broker, I give my fair value of what I think the house is worth. Again, that's just my opinion. So it doesn't mean it's hundred percent set in stone, but I'm not against the homeowner. I'm not against the buyer. I want everybody to be happy at the end of the day. And I love the word that you keep bringing up the word fair value because many sellers and buyers mm -hmm. are not sure what mm -hmm. that means. So that's why I keep bringing it up. What does fair mean? Is it your feelings about the house or is it the facts about your house? I keep asking because that's the number one question that I get. So it's not what you feel or whether you like the property or whether you agree with the price, but it's actual facts. It's actual facts. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's a sensitive, sensitive topic for mm -hmm. sure. You know, I'll go out to some properties. Well, I put in 500,000 here. Right. Well, that doesn't mean you're getting 500,000 right. back. In some cases you will, but you know, it's, I tried to just, again, if, if I feel any anxiousness at all from the seller, from anybody, I show them exactly what I'm looking at. Like, Hey, this, this, and this is what I'm looking at. Is there something I'm missing? Or just, just talk to me. I try to make an open dialogue. So everybody's on the same page. Okay. So now I'm going to have to be the bad guy. Uh -oh. Take it easy on me. So what kind of recourse does the borrower have in a situation that, okay, the appraisal comes back. The borrower feels, no, my house is worth more than that. This guy mm -hmm. was, he only looked around for this amount of time. What kind of recourse does the borrower actually have or do they have no recourse whatsoever? I mean, can they provide you additional comps? Mm -hmm. Can they provide you some additional proof to show that their house should be worth more than what you may have appraised it for at that point in time? Or is it pretty much once you put your stamp of approval and you say it is what it is, then it is what it is. You know, some appraisers might do it that way. I'm, I'm very open. Hey, if, if you think that I went too low, send me what you got, send me what you're seeing. And like I said, there are cases where there's a brand new sale that didn't record on title yet that I didn't see. And if your comps are better than mine, I'm very open to it. Like, you know what? I make a little addendum after further evaluation and we can raise that price. But to circle back to the question, most of the time I give, hey, my house is worth more. The stuff that they're giving me isn't isn't the stuff I already put in the report. They tell you about the spa. Yeah. <laughs> put a hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> I guess one of the next questions I want to ask, because don't get me wrong, uh, I guess kind of we spoke a little bit before the show in reference to, you know, buying your home mm -hmm. as well as me just getting my uh, first home as well here. How is it? that people can sell their house for more than what the house even appraises for. How does that work? Well, I mean, like like we circle back to, the market just keeps, it's resilient, it just keeps going go up and up and up. So right now, if you're not paying, if you're not the highest offer, there's gonna be 10 offers, you know, more than likely. I always say there's a difference between what a house can sell for and what it can appraise for, you know? If you're gonna pay more than what the house is gonna appraise for, then deal with it. It doesn't matter because if you're gonna live there for 20 years, what do you care if you paid 50,000? I mean, I know you care, but it shouldn't make a difference. So in this market, you're gonna have to probably pay more than maybe even what it appraises for. I will say this, world, listen to me clearly. <laughs> As the bank, whatever the appraiser says the house is worth, that's what the bank is going to give mm -hmm. you. That's right. If you choose to spend $100,000 more than what the appraiser says the house is worth, that's on you. Just want to put that out there. And I want I have a question. What's the difference between a conventional appraisal and a government appraisal? Is there a difference and does it benefit going conventional or going government? Yeah, I mean that's I'm not really on the loan side. On our sake, I mean if it's an FHA appraiser appraisal. or whatnot, mm -hmm. you know, there's a couple more detailed things we need to take a look at, you know, addicts and lead-based paint is a big thing for FHA, but it's the same appraisal, just a, a few more steps in it. doesn't, it's not, doesn't matter on value. It doesn't matter upgrades. Everything else is the same on that. So that might be a better question for Carlton. So the value is not affected because I hear many people have the misconception mm -hmm. that if I do a government loan, then there is going to be either a lesser value no. or so there is no difference in no value. Difference, no difference. Yeah. None whatsoever if you do a conventional or government loan. No. No difference. I'm looking at the same house. It'll you'll be the same value. Okay, okay. you heard it. <laughs> okay, so I got one for you. And this actually happened to my father-in-law. And man, when I tell you this guy called me screaming. So below grade. Mm -hmm. In other words, like if a person has a basement, mm -hmm. 
And even my my here's my father in law basically spent probably about fifteen grand finishing out the basement, mm-hmm. decked it out the way he wanted it, and in his mind. It was living space. Mm-hmm. However, which would have put, I think his house was around 1,500 square feet starting out. Once you finished the basement, it put the house somewhere around 2,500 square feet. Mm-hmm. Now, when the appraiser came out, he told my father-in-law that the property, he could not use what was below grade. I think that's the way he explained it. That didn't count as living square footage. How does that work? Yeah. So, I mean, we don't run into that too often um, in Southern California, but we kind of go with what the title shows. If it's below grade, if, if you add a thousand square feet, of course, any buyer is going to pay more because it's there. Just like an enclosed patio. Enclosed patio, you can have something built, air conditioning. If it's not included in the square feet, which below grade would not have been, it just counts separate, I like to say. So that doesn't mean you couldn't sell it for just as much or it's not going to appraise just as much. It just counts separate. So tell your father-in-law, it's all right. He's, he gets 1,500 square feet here and he gets a thousand square feet of basement here. So uh, he's still going to okay. get his value. Okay. He's just... Uh, yeah, it's just going to be calculated differently. I think he ran the appraiser out of the house with a broom or something. <laughs> it wasn't me. It when wasn't he me. Him, <laughs> he told him that he couldn't count the basement. Oh, yeah. he lost it. Oh. <laughs> That's a good comment that you made because I, as a home buyer, if I'm mm-hmm. looking for a property, how do what should I look at that's going to have a resale value in the future? Does it matter whether it's a three bedroom or a four bedroom, but same square footage? Three and four bedroom, not really. You know, some people prefer an office or a dining room. If, if you have a three bedroom and you taking something away to make a dining room and converting into a two, don't do that. No, that's the biggest thing. Why did you take away that third bedroom? Because it's, the reason being is tough to raise a family in two bedrooms. So you're so, saying it going from two to three makes a difference? Yeah, if you or have three, to- three and four bedrooms, no difference. Oh, the difference okay. between two and three bedrooms is a huge difference. Okay. So, Same thing with the spa and a pool? Appraisals, we kind of have to take a generic, this is what a pool is worth, you know, depending on the area. This is what a pool is worth, this is what a spa is worth. A lot of people don't, way more than you think, they take the pool and spa out. So you're never going to get back what you think it's, you know. So say I give you 15000 for a pool and 10000 for a spa. I just spent 125000 on my pool and spa. You know, what's going on here? And that's... A lot of people take those out. So can you talk to what about I know we see it a lot here mm-hmm. in Southern California, mm-hmm. unpermitted add ons to a property. Does that still get added into the square footage? Do you have to take that out of the square footage? How does that work? Yeah, so it doesn't get counted towards the square feet. So when it would affect you is, is if you do a refi, you know, like, hey, this looks nice. You didn't do it with permits, so you're not going to get credit for it. You know, I'll, I'll go to houses and they say, well, I can get this permit. You know, should I? And I kind of always answer, well, I mean, I'm sure it would cost you $1,000 with the city. Then you might have to pay property tax on it. I mean, I would, right. you know, that's that's your call, but I might not do that because you're still going to get that value when you when you sell. Is an ADU going to affect the value? They kind of make us do it how much it would cost to build it instead of, you know, what, it, what a typical buyer would pay for it. So... Of course, building costs are also out of control right now. Um, but depending on it, yeah, you'll get your value back. In, in resale, you'll definitely get your value back on that. So with that being said, can you break down what exactly is an ADU? A guest house. Accessory dwelling unit is what it stands for, but a guest house. I mean, they're becoming more and more popular. You know, many houses, ADUs in California. You will definitely get your money back on those. So do it right. Do that with permits 100%. Keep the receipts and you'll get your money back. Now, what about a bedroom is not considered a bedroom unless it has a closet? It has to have a closet and it can't be a Home Depot closet, just, you know, a standalone. It needs to actually be built into the wall and it has to have a window. So an ingress, egress, you know, it has to in and out and a closet that's built in. So it has to have a window and a closet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And that adds value. Yeah, I mean, a bedroom is always going to add value, but once you get up to four, five, six, seven, people don't care. They'd rather have this space. You know, make sure you have three bedrooms and do whatever you want with the rest of the house. Now, I got to ask this. I've always wanted to be in the same room with an appraiser to ask. Do you have any horror stories that you could share with us? <laughs> you know, I went to a house one time. This guy, I'm telling you, had not taken out the newspapers for probably 40 years. And he had little walkways here with the newspaper stacked up to my chest. Like, oh yeah, just come right here. And this house was passed on to him from his parents. So maybe they were the ones who started this collection, but it was 40 years old, smelled horrible. And that's probably the worst one. Does the old, uh, now this is 
speaking from a loan officer mm-hmm. side of things, sometimes we'll have a borrower tell us and we'll ask the question, is there any holes in the walls, any cracks in the windows? Mm-hmm. And they may say, well, there may be a little small hole in the wall from where my son threw mm-hmm. a baseball in the house. And we just tell them, hey, put a picture uh-huh. <laughs> over there. <laughs> Nine times out of 10, the appraiser probably won't look there. Is that true? Or do you all really go that in depth and you normally find that kind of stuff? No, we're not, we're not going to go that in depth. I mean, the home inspector will. So you should be warning about the home inspector. But if it's something obvious, like, hey, why is your ceiling leaking water? I mean, you know, something that's pretty obvious, we're going to have to call it out. But it holes in the wall, little things like that. It doesn't make a difference. And can we talk about the outside? What about block walls? What about fences that are tipping over? What about trees that are a nuisance? How does that affect the value? No, that would affect the value selling. You know, I'm kind of looking at it as two different ways. One for a refi, one for sale. You know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not going to affect the value because there's nothing that says in the appraisal, are there trees falling over? But as a buyer, I'd walk in like, hey, that tree's about to fall in this house, you know, maybe we don't want to pay as much for that. So that would affect it mm-hmm. as a potential buyer, okay. but not not on the appraisal side. That's, that'd be, because I can't go into everybody else's house and see if their walls are falling, you know, their trees are falling down too. With that being said, can you tell me the difference between what it is that you do mm-hmm. versus what an inspector would do? Yeah, sure. So I'm looking for the value of the house. Like I said, houses that have sold in similar condition in the last six months that I feel like a buyer would pay around the same price for it. I'm looking for the value. They're looking for all the little things. They're going to be checking the rain gutters and, you know, all the little things that the appraiser, I'm, I'm a more general approach. They're going to call out anything that may or may not be wrong with the house. Okay. Okay. So. And they're not going to give you a value. They're just fixing it. They're just going to tell you this, what's wrong that. with yeah. it. Don't fix this. Fix right. that. This could be something down the line. That is good knowledge to know. I would, one of the questions that I get often is, the covered or uncovered patios mm-hmm. and whether they're attached or mm-hmm. whether they're detached. How do you see that? <laughs> like enclosed patios you're talking about? Enclosed patios and some are attached and right. some are detached, some are covered. An enclosed patio, again, there's it's a pretty generic statement because mm-hmm. some enclosed patios I see are really nice. They have air conditioning, you know, the whole works, they're insulated, they have you know, real flooring. And other ones I see, they're just I look like I could kick it over, you know, where a strong wind comes, it's going down. So if an enclosed patio was done well, a buyer would always pay more for that. Always. But it does not affect the value? It if It's not going to get counted towards the square feet, but it okay. will affect the value. It will definitely be a benefit. Okay. And does a garage affect the square footage and the value? Not the square feet. It has its own separate thing. I mean, obviously, I'm going to pay more for a three-car garage than a two-car garage and so forth. But that's not considered in the value? It's not considered as in the square feet. It is considered, there is a space for a garage, yeah, where you get value on that. Let me just ask, for that ball where, let's say, for instance, I have a rental property. Mm -hmm. And let's say the rental property is two to three units in it. Does that appraisal get done differently versus a single family residence? Would a four unit property or an apartment building, Mm -hmm. I guess that's what you would call it. Is that one appraised totally different? The basic inspection and stuff would be the same. We would have a different form. You know, I can only go up to four units or else it's considered commercial. Of course, Um, of course. But the basic premise would be the same. You know, you'd obviously need access to all the units. There's obviously not as many units it's out there as there are single families. Mm-hmm. So the whole process is a little bit trickier. You might have to go three miles, you know, a four unit, a quadruplex. So our process is the same, but it's a little bit trickier getting to an accurate value, I'd say. Okay. Just last thing, uh, Graham, if you could tell people what tips would you want to give a new home buyer? Don't buy a house for resale value. Buy a house because you love it. Don't do things because it's going to add more value at the end. Buy it because you want to do, you want to redo the kitchen. You want to add a pool and spa. You know, you love the neighborhood. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you feel like you got a great deal or you feel like you overpaid because if that's where you want to be, that's where you want to be. Location, Buy it because you love it. Location. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much, Graham Ferguson, appraiser extraordinaire. Once again, my name is Carlton Puckett. I'm Rosie Alcaraz. And this is Homeschool. We appreciate all you Definitely like and subscribe right below. Make sure you tune in for the next episode where we tell you everything that you need to know about getting your first home. Take care, y'all.